Good morning, YouTube. We're a little bit, not really hungover, but tired because we were celebrating, ooh, squeaky brakes. We were celebrating um, how one of our friends recently defended her dissertation. So we had to celebrate that with one too many mojitos and glasses of wine. But this morning, we are going to collect some to harvest, to harvest uh, some morning glory flowers to make morning glory wine. Yay! And I have a little offering of sunflower seeds and almonds to leave for the animals and whatnot. And here we go. Bye. All right, we have found our morning glory patch, and this is the type of morning glory you are looking for if you want to make morning glory wine. A, an obviously heart-shaped leaf and a deep purple or blue uh, flower. Um, so yeah, so this is the morning glories we will be collecting here. Okay, so we harvested our purple morning glory flowers. Here they are after they've been rinsed. Um, we collected 110 of them, which is the perfect amount for this size container. We use glass just to be safe. Um, I also added one tea bag of mint medley. Um, this has spearmint and peppermint. I added some chamomile and also some lemon and ginger. Another great idea would be to use dried hibiscus flowers if you like hibiscus tea. Um, so you can be creative and add whatever additional teas, herbal teas that you want, uh, if you want. Um, here I have some recently boiled water. Distilled water would be good. But what we do is we filter it and then we boil it on the stove. And while it's still pretty warm, I'm going to add it here. Oops. And spill it all over the table. So you don't want it to be freshly, like, boiled. You want it to cool down a little bit. wooden spoon to kind of mix everything up. We collected a lot of these flowers. Now you can stop right here and this will ferment and become slightly alcoholic. So just be aware of that and I'll give more details about why and how we make Morning Glory wine in the next recording that I'm going to do. But if you do want to make this um, more alcoholic, then I would add, or I would recommend adding honey. And here we have just some Trader Joe's Turkish honey that we get at Trader Joe's. You can use whatever kind of honey you want. I've also heard of people just using white sugar. Um, but I just prefer using honey as a sweetener. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of honey to the mixture. Like this. Two, like so. Kind of stir that up, let that do its thing. So the honey is going to help it ferment and add some sweetness, of course. You don't need a lot, but just two or three tablespoons will do it. Mix this up. And basically, here you have it. It will come out to be bubbly. It's kind of like a floral champagne. 
Um, so that's why I would recommend using hibiscus flowers if you like that, or chamomile and ginger and uh, mint tea like we have today. <laughs> and basically, you just let it sit in a cool, dark place for two weeks. And I'm timing this to match the moon cycle, so tomorrow is actually the dark moon and that's when I'm going to do my witchy stuff and also work with a crystal amethyst that matches the color of, um, of the morning glories that we're using. Uh, to do some specific work with this morning glory wine. Um, so yeah, just let it sit in a cool dark place for a couple weeks, like you're making a tincture, basically. And uh, for now, I'm just going to put this lid on the mixture. But when I, I'm going to go to the store later and maybe buy a balloon like you're making homemade wine because um, it will, as it ferments, release gas and so it will blow up the balloon and then go back down. Um, so you just, you want a lid that will be able to um, help it relieve that pressure as it ferments and builds gas. I just don't have a balloon right now. So a balloon would be a good idea or maybe even like taping and making sure it's sealed, um, but taping a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag or something like that. Or I've even heard of people using condoms. <laughs> as their balloons so we'll see what happens but um yeah so this is the basic recipe or how i've made it before and there you go okay i think at this point before i go any further and talk about um the properties and the history of the uses of morning glory flowers um and morning glory seeds and whatnot, I, I think it's important for me to give a warning. So I'm neither condoning nor condemning the use of entheogens or the use of substances or plants that alter your perceptions or alter your states of consciousness. I personally support the use of entheogens. I have used um, various entheogens over the years, or what I consider to be in entheogens. Um, I do think that they can be spiritual tools, but I also can think that they can be abused and um, that they can be used as escapism or even <clears throat> um, they can become addictions so with any substance that you are thinking about putting into your body it's up to you as a responsible adult a responsible individual person to do the required research to weigh the pros and cons, to learn about the potential side effects and the potential risks before making the decision to ingest anything. And this goes for any substance that could be considered an altering substance. This can range from the caffeine and its stimulating effects in a cup of coffee to dropping acid. <laughs> It's up to you to do the research. So please don't just take my word for it. I'm going to be offering my perspectives and my experiences with Morning Glory wine, but that doesn't mean you should just take my word for it. It's up to you to do the research and it's up to you to be responsible and look into these substances before even considering using them or incorporating them into your life or spiritual practice in any way. So why am I giving this warning? Are you going to drink a cup of morning glory wine and trip balls or something? No. I'm giving this warning because certain species of morning glories, particularly the heavenly blue and the purple kinds, 
do contain trace amounts of LSA, which is related to LSD. Do your own research and look into that for yourself. Um, it's important for me now to give the warning that I am not going to be talking about how to use the seeds to achieve altered states of consciousness. I'm not going to talk about it because I have no experience with it and I actually have no desire to even try it. So if you're looking for an explanation of how to use morning glory seeds to trip balls, you're not going to find it here. And I'm not recommending even using morning glory seeds to trip or to achieve altered states. I'm not recommending it. Um, it's not as simple as going down to the garden store and buying a pack of seeds and just forcing them down. It's not that simple. And actually using the seeds that you find in garden stores is dangerous because those seeds could contain pesticides or uh, fertilizers. So they could cause some serious problems with your health. So just don't do it. <laughs> Morning Glory wine, however, you use the flowers, and it's debatable from what I've read online how much LSA the flowers actually contain. If they do contain anything at all, it's very, it's a very, very, very small amount. So, from my experience of using the flowers, I first drank Morning Glory wine in college, and it was prepared by a close friend of mine. He simply just picked a bunch of the flowers, put them in water, left the container of water and flowers in his, high, uh, in his college dorm closet for two weeks, and then we drank it after filtering the water or the flowers out. And then we went outside and sat beneath some big pine trees, and um, other than the morning glory wine, I did not consume any other substances that night. So this is how I know that there is some slight altering effects. Because um, very quickly after you drink the morning glory wine, or after I drank the morning glory wine, I noticed as we were sitting outside that, um, and this was happening during sunset, that colors seemed brighter, I felt relaxed, and the pine trees, the way the light was hitting the pine trees, it gave them kind of a bluish glow. Um, as I was looking at the individual branches um, on the trees. But the effects, they came on very quickly, but they also wore off very quickly. And that was it. Um, the second time I had Morning Glory wine, about a year later, I prepared it with a close friend. And this time we added uh, tea for flavor. I think we added some like, some celestial seasonings, herbal teas that had like berry flavors and stuff, along with some mint teas. And then we also added honey and we put it in a big glass container, put the lid on it, let it sit for a few weeks, and then we drank it. Um, so the honey actually increased the fermentation process, so it was alcoholic. And because we didn't know what we were doing, when we tried to pour <laughs> the wine, um, the, the cap to the bottle just flew off like it was a bottle of champagne. It just poof, popped off. <laughs> kind of funny at the time. Um, so the second time that I drank Morning Glory wine, I had also smoked some marijuana. So basically what the Morning Glory wine did was just enhance the effects of the marijuana. So if you do incorporate marijuana into your life and or spiritual practice, it would be a good idea, I think, to um, also drink some of the Morning Glory wine and just notice how it just enhances the effects of the marijuana as far as how you see colors. Um, that's the biggest thing that was affected in me, at least, when I take it, is just colors seem brighter. Um, so, for those of you who have had wormwood tea, 
if you've been able to stomach it because it is incredibly bitter. I would liken it to wormwood tea, which I also consider to be an entheogen um, because in my experience of drinking wormwood tea, it also made me feel relaxed and made me perceive colors. Um, colors seemed a little bit brighter. Uh, so I would liken Morning Glory wine to wormwood tea. Now, going back to the original point, it is arguable whether or not Morning Glory flowers actually have any LSA or any hallucinatory effects, but from my experience, I would say that there are trace amounts and that they do change your perception slightly. But overall, I would just recommend trying Morning Glory wine after doing your research, making sure that it's safe for you. Um, I would recommend drinking it because it is a beautiful herbal floral kind of wine. It's kind of like a flowery mead if you use honey to sweeten it, especially. Um, so if you already make your own mead, consider adding some blue or purple morning glory blossoms um, to just add some flavor and a, a nice floral effect. It's, it reminds me a lot of hibiscus tea, of hibiscus flowers. Um, so now that I think about it, some hibiscus mead would be delicious. Um, I'm sure somebody's already made that. So now I'm going to talk about the history of the use of morning glories and uh, their spiritual significance um, in other cultures, specifically Mayan and Aztec cultures in, um, you know, the cultures of ancient Mesoamerica, and also what they signify to me because morning glories are my favorite flower. So that's up next. Okay, so let's talk about some of the chemical, magical properties and histories of morning glories. And first of all, just wanted to show you the progress. So I've been brewing this morning glory wine for the past four or five days now. You can see this beautiful color that came out because of all the purple morning glories that we used. And then we ended up taping this... Um, plastic bag to the top just to catch the gases that were being released as this bruise. So, morning glories, let me refer to my notes here. So from just some basic research that I've been doing, uh, I found that there are three main types or species of morning glories which have been used um, for spiritual purposes. Um, the first, and I have never formally studied Latin so I'm probably butchering these Latin names, but the first is called Turbina corimbosa and it's a white species of morning glories which are um, originally native to Latin America, starting from Mexico down all the way to Peru. Um, it does exist here in the United States in um, more northern areas. It also exists in, I think, Europe and Australia, but it's considered an invasive species. But it's the white morning glories. Principally in uh, ancient Mesoamerica, so what we call present-day Mexico and Central America now, um, the Aztecs, the Maya, and the Zapotecs, along with other indigenous groups, used um, this species and the other two species that I'm about to mention. Uh, in ceremonies, uh, the seeds were given as offerings, and supposedly the seeds were consumed um, because of their uh, hallucinatory effects. So anyway, so this white species of morning glory, um, it had several names in Mayan, and I don't speak Mayan, so pardon my butchering, but in Mayan it was called Um One word in Nahuatl, 
which is the language of the Nahua peoples. Uh, people still speak Nahuatl, but it was the language of the Aztecs, basically. Um, Ololiuki, which refers to the seeds, and it means round things, so that's the name for the seeds. And then another Nahuatl word, Kwaxitwitl, uh, means snake plant, referring to the fact that the, the plant is a vine and it grows um, up like a vine, like a snake. So the kwa at the beginning of that word, kwaxitwitl, <laughs> Um, it might sound familiar if you're familiar with the Aztec pantheon of gods and goddesses. For example, Quetzalcoatl, that koa, um, that was the feathered snake god, a uh, god of air and a god of um, the morning star, or Venus. Um, so that koatl is referring to the serpent aspect of that god. And then also Quatlique. Um, she was a creation goddess, and um, she wore a skirt made of serpents. So her name is like the serpent skirt, or the one who wears a serpent skirt, basically is her name. Um, so that's where the kwa part of, the, of that word comes from. Another word in Spanish uh, is semilla de la virgen, or the seed of the virgin, referring to the Virgin Mary. Um, so those are just some, some names for the white morning glory. The heavenly blue morning glory um, is Ipomoea tricolor, that's its Latin name. Um, and in Nahuatl it was referred, or the seeds of this species of morning glory were referred to as, I'm gonna butcher this, Tlit Tlitzin, which means like little black one or black referring to the color of the seeds being black and then finally in the same uh, genus as the heavenly blue morning glories we have the purple morning glories which is what i picked ipomoea purpurea so what is in morning glories that makes them supposedly hallucinogenic or that makes them have properties that put you into a slightly altered state of consciousness. <laughs> um, they have LSA, and LSA is D-lysergic acid amide. Now, if you've heard of LSD, you know it's lysergic acid diethylamide. So this is, this has the same lysergic acid in it. Um, it's so, this al it's an alkaloid, lysergol, or lysergol, it's an alkaloid, it's an ergine, um, so in that way it's related to, but not really directly to, um, to LSD. In the Western world, we became aware of the entheogenic use of morning glories thanks to this guy, Richard Schultz, and if you're familiar with the book, Plants of the Gods, which, if you're interested in ethnobotany or entheogens in general, you probably know that book. Well, he co-authored it with um, Albert Hoffman, who was the guy who discovered LSD in the 1940s. So Richard Schultz was an American botanist, and he's considered uh, a father of ethnobotany. And in 1941, he was the first Westerner, white man, to record the use of morning glory seeds by... Um, indigenous peoples in present-day Mexico. Um, so that's how the Western world kind of got in the know as far as the use of morning glories um, for spiritual and entheogenic purposes. So what is it about morning glory that turns me on magically? Basically, the fact that it reminds me of this, of amethyst, and I think that matching a crystal with an herb or a flower is an excellent way to kind of explore the properties of both the crystal and the flower. So purple morning glories especially make me think of amethyst, and amethyst being such a, you know, third eye chakra spiritual kind of crystal. 
Um, I think that morning glories, especially the blue and purple kinds, also have those kind of aspects, those um, third eye opening aspects, especially considering the fact that they do have some altering effects when it comes to our perceptions. Also, the fact that um, the plant is associated with snakes or was associated with snakes by um, you know, ancient Aztec and ancient indigenous peoples in Mesoamerica in, um, in that region. Um, they called it the snake plant, like I just mentioned, and not just because it kind of slithers, but because it reaches up for towards the sun. There are so many cultures around the world that use the snake as a spiritual symbol or um, cultures that believe that snakes have certain magical or spiritual properties, healing properties, um, you name it, snakes are uh, revered around the world. So the fact that morning glories have that snake-like aspect to them um, only adds to their magic, in my eyes anyway. Also the fact that they come out in the morning and the fact that they are vines, that they crawl, they slither up towards the sun, grasping for the sun, opening themselves up to the morning sun in the, at least where I live, in the late spring and throughout the summer, they have a very strong solar energy. Um, they have a masculine energy to me because of that reaching for the sun. Um, kind of action that they do. So to sum it all up, morning glories are a very spiritual flower for me. They are great for meditation work, even just visualizing a morning glory and visualizing the blossom opening as it reaches for the sun could be a great way to like visualize your third eye opening and blossoming and reaching towards the light of enlightenment um the light of truth like that would be a great practice a great way to incorporate just the idea and image of morning glories or morning glories as a symbol um a great way to incorporate them into your meditation uh it would be great to work with them in conjunction with a crystal like amethyst for example or a crystal that matches the color of the morning glory that you're most attracted to um, another way to incorporate morning glories is to think of their serpentine ways, uh, the fact that they are a vine, that they crawl, that they reach towards the sun, um, to associate them with snakes and the magical powers of snakes according to your own practices and your own beliefs. Um, yeah, there's just so many things to do with morning glories. Uh, and just going out in nature and finding a patch and just admiring how beautiful they are and how resilient they are and how prolific they are. Um, they would be a great flower for working with abundance if you work with the energies of the sun for abundance in the spring and summer. Uh, morning glories would be a great flower to work with that idea of abundance. So that's why morning glories are my favorite flower. They're just so spiritual, and I've also had many experiences with them drinking Morning Glory Wine. Alright, as you can see, my container full of Morning Glory Wine is empty because I have poured it into a more accessible container. Um, I also needed to pour it in here so that I can drain out the solid material. So I used unbleached cheesecloth. I have one piece laid this way and another piece laid this way to get some of the solid materials out. Um, I went ahead and just caught the plant materials and the tea bags with a spoon and put it in here. This is our organic garbage that we freeze so that it doesn't stink up the house um, instead of putting it in the kitchen garbage can. Um, so that right there is the flowers and the tea bags and then the rest was just caught 
with the cheesecloth. Let me move this out of the way. And here you have it. That is a gorgeous pinkish red color. Let me see if I can really show you what this looks like in better lighting. There we go. It almost kind of looks like blood, but it's more of a rose pinkish red. And it smells delicious. And here soon my husband and I will enjoy this and I'll let you know how that goes. Bye! So, how did our experience drinking the Morning Glory wine go? Um, and by the way, I'm back up in Massachusetts now. I started recording and editing this video when I was still in Georgia and it's been taking me weeks to put this together. Sorry about that. Um, you can see my altar behind me, full of wonderful goodness. Um, so, before I left Georgia, my husband and I sat down on the couch to watch a really bad movie, Deadly Prey because we are fans of terrible movies, kind of like a Mystery Science Theater 3000 style, or if you're familiar with the YouTube channel called Red Letter Media, they make a lot of funny videos analyzing terrible movies. Um, anyway, so we sat down to watch Deadly Prey, which kind of has its own little cult going on. Um, bad movie terrible but it's so funny um so we drank the morning glory wine we each had about three or four glasses and when i say glasses i mean like the amount you would pour into a wine glass so three or four glasses each and because the alcohol content was so low we were able to like drink it rapidly which is the idea. Um, of course, if the alcohol content, if you can tell it's higher when you make your batch, don't like chug it down, like be safe. But the idea is to drink it fairly rapidly because the effects of the morning glories, they, they come on rapidly, but they also wear off rapidly. So after the first glass, I started getting giggly, but of course we were watching a terrible movie, which was funny in its own right. So I was giggly. We both felt really relaxed. So I think there's some very, very mild sedative properties to it too. And when I asked, I asked my husband how he was feeling, and this is what he did and said, I feel fluidy. <laughs> so he felt fluidy. Hold on. Sorry about that, one of my neighbors keeps having their uh, fire alarm going off. Um, so he felt fluidy. We both felt relaxed and kind of chill. It's kind of like the same feeling you get after drinking a glass of red wine, but on top of that you might get a little giggly or um, I also noticed some slight changes in how I perceived colors and depth perception and things like that, but everything was like super super mild super mild so overall i would highly suggest checking out morning glories um maybe making your own batch of morning glory wine responsibly checking out the history of morning glories and their significance in different cultures particularly um you know aztec and mayan cultures uh really fascinating stuff so What's your experience with Morning Glory Wine? Have you even heard of Morning Glory Wine? Um, have you tried it? When you try it? Let me know how it works for you. Comment below. Do you incorporate Morning Glories into your magical practice or into you anything in your life? Um, yeah, they're really a beautiful flower, so... I hope everything works out for you, and let me know how everything goes when you try your own batch of morning glories. Okay, bye!